Director, would you like to give okay. us your report? Certainly, I would be happy to. Thank you. Uh, just to update you on the board planning session that we hosted May 20th through the 21st in Atlanta at the Georgia Power Resource Center. We were fortunate to have the opportunity to visit the Georgia Resource Center. For those of you who don't really know what that is, it's from Georgia Power. It's located in Atlanta under the Center Tree Building in partnership with pretty much the Georgia Department of Economic Development. Um, Georgia EMC, location, uh, sorry, Electric Cities of Georgia. So it's a good um, support service for all the economic activity that takes place throughout the state of Georgia. It's all consolidated there. But Georgia Power has what's called the Resource Center, and they use that for recruitment of projects. And I think our leadership was able to see what all they can do for a project and how that works. So the General Manager for Economic Development with Georgia Power hosted us and walked us through the process of economic development and um, how we get through the funnel of not being eliminated in that process. And I'd be happy to say that we've always been very successful in getting to the bottom of the funnel um, and being shortlisted for those projects and won a lot of those projects in the past. So um, we also heard from that, but the interesting thing is that we wanted to really look at is our demographic demographics and what they look like in relation to the recruitment of a project. And I think we all learned some very interesting things. Um, the makeup of our workforce is probably not what we originally thought it to be. Um, so addressing some of those issues as it, record, as it relates to the recruitment of projects. And um, so that was interesting information. After listening to Jennifer Sellers with the, the Director of Research for Georgia Power, we then had the opportunity to talk and have a discussion with a location advisor with uh, Kate McEnroe. And she has Kate McEnroe Consulting. And what she does is she manages real estate portfolios and makes site location recommendations to large companies. Um, on where they should be doing business and how that meets into their business matrix. She also, though, is uh, an advisor to economic development um, organizations on how they can better improve their process and address some of the fatal flaws that come up in the recruitment and selection process. Um, it was a good meeting. We had a lot of really great feedback. And the board has asked, as well as um, with the mayor and the county chairman, that we do that similar thing here in Valdosta um, and invite our school systems and our higher education um, individuals as well as key business people here in our community and elected officials to see the presentation and to get some of their feedback. So at this moment I got everybody confirmed for August 20th. Um, time to be determined. Um, but we are looking to make those arrangements and get that finalized with our agenda and an invitation. So uh, we're looking forward to that. And well, I, I think you kind of talked around it a little bit. But I thought that, that the both the city and the county participation was just really a, a, a big key to that meeting for me. Mm -hmm. um, I, I thought it helped the, uh, the it helped all of us to understand what the what the state could do. And then I think that, that the folks in Atlanta were very impressed that we were all there with the city and the county yeah, leadership. Right. I, I thought that helped. Yeah, and it, um, it's very rare that an entire community, along with city and county leadership, uh, make the effort to go to their offices and meet with them individually as well as a group. So we kicked off the morning with a networking reception with all the Department of Economic Development and statewide economic developers in that building, and we had a really great turnout. So it was a good opportunity to meet everybody and for them to meet our leadership and the people that are going to help them with the projects and making critical decisions. So we'll be looking forward to that meeting in the August 20th. Uh, we'll keep you posted on that. Um, also wanted to talk a little bit about some other meetings that we've had that have been key to, as a follow up to that meeting. Uh, I met with our regional manager for the Department of Georgia Department of Labor and walked him through some of those statistics as it relates to the workforce and what the workforce is made up of here 
for well, what we're graduating here and what people are seeing when they look to recruit a project and what our workforce looks like. Um, and walk them through, you know, the information that you may give us is going to be different than the information that they're actually pulling and what they're actually looking for, and this is the information we need. Um, so I also had a follow-up meeting with um, Wiregrass Georgia Technical College, and I also have it on my books to meet with Dr. McKinney at Valdosta State University and show him this information as well. Um, I had a great meeting with Dr. Anderson, Dr. Utley, and Angela Krantz at Wiregrass Technical College to walk them through what our top degrees are and what we're really, when we go to recruit manufacturing as well as logistics distribution, what they're seeing our workforce as are nurses, which is key to what we have here in the hospital, nurses and teachers, as well as criminal justice majors. And for a manufacturing facility, those aren't the skills that they're looking for to fill 500 jobs, 200 jobs, 150 jobs. So what can we do in the future to help with that? And how can we tell our workforce story when we are asked those questions? And where are the gaps? Because we know that we do have certificate programs and associate degrees offered at YRS Georgia Technical College. It's just how do we better educate um, the projects and the people on what we can do for our workforce. Um, so we met with them. We also met, I also met with um, Joanne Lewis, who is my counterpart in Douglas Coffee County, to discuss um, speculative buildings and what her program looks like and how that has worked for her community over the last 30 years and um, found that they've actually done it over the last 30 years and um, relocated four different businesses. And in the meantime, for the seven to eight years that they've actually held those, those buildings on their role, on, on their balance sheet, or, um, they recruited additional businesses that may not have fit directly into that spectrum <coughs> building. Um, so would like to talk a little bit more about that at some point when we get more information. Um, and then I would just like to really re-emphasize, um, while we haven't seen a lot of new projects, that's typical throughout our region within here in the South. Um, and in discussing this with my counterparts, discussing this with the individuals in Atlanta, other companies, um, and other people that are doing the same thing we're doing, the activity for new in the South part of the Southern part of Georgia is just not what we're used to seeing. It is pretty much very minimal. Um, and uh, we were, hopeful in the beginning of the year that we would see more, but that's declined as well. Um, I would tell you that the, the request for information that we do see are not your large projects that you're wanting to see. So the projects that we're seeing are more 25 jobs, um, high capital investment, but they're 25 to 50 jobs, 40 to 70,000 square foot. And that's where we're leading towards the spec building is within the last month, the current buildings that we have on the market from the thirty to $70,000 range will not accommodate the types of industries that are looking, and those are food um, businesses that we want in our community that need a different type of um, building and infrastructure in place, and we don't have those um, currently in our book. Andrew, tell me how has the building of spec buildings served Coffee County within the last five to six years? Actually, in the last five to six years, all of their spec buildings are currently occupied. So um, within the first spec building that they built, it took seven to eight years to get a company into it. Um, but in the meantime, they recruited two other additional companies to come <coughs> into their community. So it did what it was supposed to do. It attracted people to the community for them to see the community. You know, that's one of the things that we're very good at. We're good at if we can get them here, then we can sell them on the community. But right now, it's getting them here. Um, and the majority of projects are driven more towards the metro area and the hour and a half commute time. And they're, you know, businesses right now are looking, how do I minimize my risk? And they're doing a lot of tire kicking, and they kick it about three or four times. And when they get the fourth time, they're like, the best place to minimize my risk is to be the closest to the largest population I can get my product to. Well, the largest population is Atlanta, 
So if I can be an hour and a half to two mm -hmm. hours, I can move my product and get it into that area and then work, worry about getting it outside. So that's kind of where we're at right now with the manufacturing and logistics distribution side. So, so they've never really built any spec buildings in the last five or six years. I, I don't see there's much activity over here. Well, actually, um, they have a lot of expansions, which is what we're seeing for okay. the last two years is expansions. I think what's important for people to realize is, yes, we have our existing industries, mm -hmm. but those existing industries compete for those expansions. Mm -hmm. So we still have to recruit that expansion just like we would a new industry because there's several staffs, you know, well, they have to decide where they want to make that capital investment and put the new line in. And it may not be about Austin, it may be about Austin up against Jacksonville. So, you know, we want to compete for the expansion, the capital investment, and the additional jobs. Um, and the same goes for DuPont and having to, you know, that's a visiting of headquarters. I would tell you White Hub's Cadillac, while it's an existing industry, it's a growth of that existing industry and convincing their corporate headquarters in Atlanta to do it here in Valdosta. So um, it's, you know, I know a lot of people don't think the existing industry is sexy. It's not the sexy ribbon cutting that you want, but it's just as competitive as getting into business. And that's the likelihood of us continuing to grow our jobs and capital investment. So um, I would tell you that um, from the spec building program, but what I would tell you, Douglas Coffee County, they're actually building a new one. So they are building the first one that they built in the last five years. It'll be 70,000 square feet and a $1.9 million capital investment. And that's all done through their development authority. But there are several other ways to do spec buildings that we're looking at. And there can be a, a public-private partnership that um, makes it both a win-win situation for the community as well for the private sector. And that, okay, and then the next most important thing we'd like to talk about is during our uh, planning session in Atlanta, our, the subjects of our name came up in the Valdosta Lowndes County Industrial Authority. And throughout the state, there are several other entities that were industrial authorities to begin with, but over the years have changed their name or are doing business as development authorities. Because our role has changed so much over the last few years to where, you know, we handle, you know, call centers. Well, that's not industrial that we typically think of, smokestacks. You know, it's a different type of business that we're going after, professional services, back office space, and things like that. So this will only help accurately portray what we're currently doing here in the industrial authority. And we would like to ask the board to support us Steve's going to help me with this to make sure I get this correct. Um, the Valdosta Lowndes County trade name, so doing it as a trade name registra registration for the Valdosta Lowndes County Development Authority is a trade name of the Valdosta Lowndes County Industrial Authority. Did I get that right? That's okay. So, so that's what we would like. Doing business as. Valdosta Lowndes Development Authority is it will be, become a trade name of Valdosta Lowndes County Industrial Authority. We will file a petition in, with the Secretary of State, and then all it is is a trade name registration to use that name. The entity is still going to be Valdosta Lowndes County Industrial Authority. And it will not change any of our constitutional, constitutional rights um, that were given to us by the legislature. If we, if we technically change the name, we'd have to go back to the legislature and have that name changed. And since we're a constitutional authority, we're in the minority. It's not that many still constitutional parties, and we want to keep that because it allows us to do a lot of things that the, that the uh, other parties cannot do. So, I so on the trade name route, I think we can, we can protect the integrity of the Valdosta Lands County Industrial Authority, but we can use the name Valdosta Lands Development Authority. So, do you need a motion that would say? I think it would be appropriate. And so the, the motion needs to say that we would apply for a new trade name. I move that we authorize council and our director to move forward with the application process of allowing us to use the trade name Valdosta Lowndes County Development Authority. Valdosta Lowndes Development Authority. Valdosta Lowndes Development Authority. 
support that motion with a second. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. okay. And that concludes my report. All right. Attorneys to be heard. Shortly I'll do this.